Hi, everyone. We're going to demonstrate the CDC guidelines on how to don and dock. We'll start with the first step. Dr. Knowlton, you're on. Okay, great. So good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to start uh, with the donning of PPE process first. So you can imagine that you're outside of the patient's room right now or in the ante room. The first step would be to tie back your hair if applicable. That's not applicable to uh, Dr. Nassar, but we'll just move right along to sanitizing and washing your hands. So what you want to do is perform hand hygiene for approximately 20 to 30 seconds. You're going to apply one to two pumps of alcohol-based hand rub to the palms of your dry hands. First, you want to rub palm to palm, then rub one palm over the dorsum of the other hand and vice versa. Next, you're gonna rub palm to palm with your fingers interlaced. And then you're gonna rub the backs of your fingers on one hand uh, to the opposing palm with fingers interlocked and vice versa. Then you wanna also make sure that you get your thumbs using a rotational motion. Make sure finally to clean the underneath uh, of your fingernails and your nail beds and continue rubbing and hands are completely dry. Next step is going to be to don your gown. So you want to unfold your gown. Uh, we're going to be using usually these yellow disposable kinds um, and first want to secure it around your neck. Then next you secure the, the gown around your bit. waist. So then you want to tie it around your waist, uh, securing it in a bow that can easily be untied. And then Dr. Nassar, if you could turn around and show us, you want the edges of the back of the gown to meet so that your clothing is covered. Okay, the next step will be to don the N95 mask. So pick up your mask and cup it in your hand. Lift your chin and place the mask over your nose and mouth. You're going to stretch the bottom strap for first over your head and place it on the back of your neck. And then place the top strap on the crown of your head, ensuring that the straps are not overlapping or crossed. The next thing you want to do to create your seal is to put your dominant hand thumb on the bridge of your nose and then squeeze with index and thumb of your other hand to create a seal. This maneuver will prevent a pinching effect on the nose so that air doesn't leak around the mask. Okay, now you want to check to see if the mask is properly formed to the face. Exhale and inhale to make sure that there's no air leak and that you have a good seal. Now you're ready to move on and don either your goggles or your face shield. We're going to use a uh, face shield or sorry, goggles for the purposes of uh, this uh, simulation. If you're using a face shield, you want to start by placing the elastic strap head. Ensure that the foam top of your face shield is resting in the middle of your forehead. And then once the shield is situated, check to make sure it covers the front and side of your face. The final step is to don your gloves. So put on your gloves. Those should be outside of the patient room or the ante room. And make sure that the cuff of the gloves goes over the cuff of your gown so that no skin of your wrist is exposed. OK, now Dr. Nassar is ready to enter the patient's room. So now I'm ready to go to the patient room. And so this is the ante room, as Dr. Knowlton has mentioned, or the hallway. So some, you know, isolation rooms have ante room and some of them do not have ante room. And Dr. So, and Carlene Mills will talk to tell us about it more in the, after we finish this demonstration. So I go to the patient room. Okay, so now I'm in the patient room right now. Okay, so I'm still in the patient room. Okay, I'm not in the hallway or the ante room. Okay, go ahead, doctor. Uh, okay, Nolte. so very important, while you're still in the patient's room, you want to make sure that you remove your gloves and gown. Uh, so the first thing you wanna do is make sure that they're not grossly soiled. Um, 
And then at that point, uh, once you start to do the removal process, uh, you want to remove the gown by untying it around the waist first, and then hold so, the straps. So, so here we, if the, if, if the gloves are not soiled, you, mm -hmm. you, you could gel on top of the gloves according to the CDC video like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, and then once it's dry, go ahead, Dr. Knowlton. Then you can untie the straps, hold them in your hands uh, so that they don't dangle down and contaminate your scrubs. And then you want to lean forward, crossing your hands, reaching towards your shoulders and rip off the gown. And while you're doing this, make sure to not let the gown touch your clothes. So you really want to try and remove the gown from inside out so that you're only touching the inside of the gown and then you can roll it into a ball and dispose of it into the uh, biohazard bin. At the same time, you're gonna remove your gloves. So remove the ins from the inside of the glove from one hand and then leading to the contralateral hand, making sure not to contaminate your body with the outside of the glove. So you wanna slowly di dispose of both of these things together into the biohazard bin in the patient room. Next, you're gonna sanitize your hands as we described above for 20 or 30 seconds. The next step while you're still in the patient room is to doff the goggles or face shield. Uh, so you wanna remove the face shield by grabbing the strap at the back of your head. Usually, you say, as I said, you sing two birthday songs for yourself. That's about 20 <laughs> seconds or 23 seconds. Um, I know it feels like forever, but just think about something. But you got to do it properly, and we're trying to kind of relay that. Okay. So Sorry. you remove then, the face shield by grabbing the strap at the back of your head. Slowly remove it by pulling it down and away from your face while you're in the sniffing position. So bent forward, eyes forward, and chin out. Make sure not to touch your bare skin and then dispose of the mask in the biohazard bin as well. And then you're gonna sanitize your hands again. So I have not disposed it in the, because we are using that face shield for future sessions, but you should get rid of it, okay. So another 20 to 30 seconds. And then once Dr. Nassar completes that step, he'll be ready to turn the knob um, and exit the uh, patient room with very clean hands. So that's very important. I'm doing, so you should not be wearing anything other than the mask inside the patient room. So when you touch the doorknob, that's, there's a lot of discussion of a lot of feedback I got from the nursing staff from everywhere, is that this doorknob should be clean at all times. It should, you should not touch it with your dirty gloves. You could touch it with clean gloves, that's fine. But this should be clean at all times, please. And the biggest question is, why are we you know, exposing ourselves to the virus inside, but you're about six feet away from the patient, so the likelihood of that is small. Even if it's aer aerosolized, you got the N95 mask, and then it's a brief period, and you, you come out, and then you go into the anteroom or the hallway. Now I'm in the anteroom. Go ahead, Dr. Norton. Okay, so now that uh, you're in the anteroom, uh, the final step is to perform hand hygiene once more, and then you want to doff your N95 mask. So in order to do that, you want to remove your mask without touching the exterior part of the mask. So this is going to involve uh, assuming the sniffing position once more, removing one strap at a time, starting with the bottom strap, then removing the top strap. So you grasp the straps, pull them from the back of your head, and then dispose of the mask in a uh, biohazard bin, making sure that the mask drops in first. Now we heard okay. that, uh, sorry, thank you, Lisa. We heard that they're, they're running out of the hazard red bag. So it could be in the anteroom, you get white bag. So that's fine, but they say on it, PPE trash bin. 
that's what we heard. So it's inter. But ideally, if there's a red biohazard flashback, that's and then and then you hold it from the strings like that. Make sure obviously you don't contaminate yourself and you get rid of it. So you get rid of your mask in the ante room or in the hallway if there's no ante room. Okay. And obviously we're gonna okay. reuse this. This is an industrial mask, not hospital mask, just FYI. Okay. Okay, and the final step is then to once again sanitize your hands for 20 to 30 seconds. And then when you're ready, we'll do the last scenario, which will involve uh, cleaning of the face shield uh, as well as uh, mask reuse. Moving back to uh, imagining Dr. Nassar still being in the patient room. Uh, so if you imagine that he was gowned and gloved as per previous, and then he has his N95 mask on as well as his face shield, maybe we could just put the, uh, the face shield uh, and the mask back on for purposes of this demonstration. So once again, imagine that he's removed his gown and gloves as we previously described and sanitized his hands before leaving the patient room, but he keeps the face shield on uh, as well as the mask. So at this point, he can exit to the ante room and sanitize his hands again. Okay, and once his hands are dry, and he's going to use the same sanitizing method that we described previously, he's going to put, put on a clean pair of gloves. So the next step is going to be to identify a designated clean area to rest the face shield on uh, using appropriate antibacterial wipes. So there should be a specified area that's appropriate uh, on each ward for you to do this. That's the purple one because it has most of bactericidal. That's what I got told. I don't know, Peter, uh, do you want to comment on that really quick? Yes, uh, the, super, the super Santa Claus um, <laughs> has a short dwell time. So it, so things should uh, only need to stay uh, moist for, for two minutes to have You're complete correct. disinfections. Okay, Lisa. Okay, great. So once uh, you clean the area, um, then you're going to doff the face shield. So once you're ready, Dr. Nassar, you can uh, remove the face sure. shield as previously described in the above scenario. Totally. But what I do usually, in addition to that, I get three of these sheets out and I'll get to tell you what I do with them. Three sheets. Okay. And one of the sheets, I rip them and put in my left hand and I create a clean space, as Dr. Uh, Knowlton said, with two sheets. So that's going to be my uh, ma uh, face shield landing zone right here on these two sheets. One in my hand, I'm going to put it on the side right here. This is from experience. This is the most efficient way of doing this. Okay. Went through the lots of it. So two on the ground, two, two resting zone here to, to rest that face shield and one on outside. And the one that you clean is in the garbage can. All right. Now you, 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 you doff the mask. Go ahead. Exactly. So using the sniffing position, you doff the face shield, as we described previously, making sure not to touch your face. And then once it's off, uh, in order to clean the face shield, you want to wipe it with the disinfectant wipes, uh, starting sort of on the strap, which is clean and then the inside of the shield, which is gonna be slightly more clean than the outside. So wipe the inside of the shield, and then finally the outside. And then That's once you're done with that process, uh, you can leave it on a clean service for a few minutes to, uh, to dry off. So leave it like this, okay. Mm -hmm. Oops, can, can you zoom in please? Uh, uh, Teresa, and I put it outside. See, I'm trying to put always the, um, you know, upside down, make sure that the dirty part, uh, or sorry, the outside part is to the outside and let it rest. Okay. And now I'm reusing the N95. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, so now you're going to remove your gloves. And this is how you remove your you gloves. That these the are... surgeons, you guys know how to remove the gloves. Obviously, like a beach. Yes. There's a beak technique, whatever, but let's just do it the easy way. That's what we're doing, you know, just try not to touch mm -hmm. your gloves as much as you can. 
So you're removing those because they're contaminated by cleaning the face shield. Perform hand hygiene once more and then put on clean gloves. You're gonna do it fast forward here. <laughs> Two happy birthday songs for me. All right, okay. All right. Okay, and then the seconds. next step is to uh, doff your mask. So once again, you're removing your mask without touching the exterior part of the mask or your face. So remove the bottom strap and then the top strap, pull them forward from the back of your head. And then um, essentially you would dispose of this mask or if you're re reusing it, uh, you would use a paper bag. So. Essentially, we want to have a breathable paper bag for reuse. My understanding is that these will be available to us. You can write your name on it uh, to prevent accidental reuse. And you want to drop the mask inside uh, with the actual outside of the mask facing downwards. If you had a procedure mask at this point, you can fold it uh, with the outside of the mask Where's sort of uh, folded against itself uh, so that you're only exposing the clean part. Yeah. Do you have one of those there to demonstrate? So you sort of fold it inside out once you remove it. Correct. And then you put it somewhere. 